Hello everyone, welcome back to the Scrap Zone. I'm Julie and in today's video I'm pretty excited to share with you this really simple hack when you are doing stenciling. So let's jump right in and I'm going to show you how I created these beautiful projects right here. So for those of you who have a Cricut and you have a mat, I know that I throw these out and I kind of feel bad, but you know what? When it's kind of used up, you can totally use your Cricut mat and you can put down your piece that you're going to stencil and it's not going to move. So I'm going to show you here uh, an example of how I did that. So this card right here, I wanted to stencil right in the center. So see, my cardstock is not moving. And then I'm going to add my layered stencil right on top. So you saw me adding washi tape and the washi tape is actually facing up. And I added my stencil right on top. I stuck it down and it's not moving. So I don't know about you guys, but you know, when you put your hand down and you have to have that grip on it so nothing moves, this way here, I'm just gently pressing my hand and I'm going ahead and I am stenciling my leaves. And you saw me here, I just rotated, which is like bonus, rotated that image around so that I can just stencil in the way that I'm most comfortable. So this is really game changing. It was for me. And I thought that I would create a few projects using the Many Wishes card making kit that is now available through Close My Heart for National Scrapbooking Month. So you see here that I am adding my second layer of that same stencil. I'm pressing it down into the washi tape. I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to add some peach ink. I'm going to go all around that beautiful flower. I want the peach to be on the outer edges of that petal. So there's two flowers here. So on the outer edges of both of these flowers. And then I come back in with a darker shade right into the center. And there you have it. You've got your perfect stencil panel and it was held down by an old Cricut mat. So don't throw those away just yet because this is a great way to extend your crafty supplies. Now you just put your card down, nothing moves, you add your stencil. I think that this is really cool. So I hope that you think so too. So let's start working on these projects. And this is card number one. So this is an A2 card and I'm showing you here that when you're off, your panel, you don't even need to add washi tape. Everything is stuck down to your Cricut mat. So I'm going to add my second layer. And in between here, I have to remember to wipe that stencil off because in these projects that I did, I actually flipped that um, stencil from, I guess, the top side to the bottom side. So you have to make sure to clean everything off. So here you saw me grabbing some washi tape and I kind of took a little bit of the tackiness off just with, you know, the oils that are on my hand. And I did tack it down just to provide additional stability. I can't tell you how many times I've used a stencil and uh, it moves on me and then I have to start over. This way here is perfect. Like I pull off my stencil, I've got my card front right on my mat and uh, it's really really great so let's put this card together so i did cut all of the pieces and uh, i'm just gonna distress these a little bit so i'm gonna pull out just a regular sanding block you know the ones that you get to do your nails and i'm just going to sand all of those pieces very, very gently. So I'm not adding a lot of pressure here. And I am holding the leaf right at the bottom of the stem or the branch, if you want, only because if you don't do that, you will rip that little leaf right off. 
ask me how I know that. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to sand all of those pieces just to give them a little bit of texture and dimension. And uh, I'm going to add them all together. So I'm going to glue the front to the back piece. So those were cut out in the same colors that I did the inking. So in peach and in paprika. And I'm just going to layer them up. All of these flowers were cut from the layered flowers and I've invested in that die so I thought you know what let's use it on these cards because it's so pretty so I'm going to add my little centerpiece right here with thin 3d foam tape so I try to stay to the thin 3d foam tape when I'm making cards just to add dimension but not too much bulk so of course we had to do a little bit of splattering, so I'm going to press that ink into my lid. I'm going to add a little bit of water, and then I'm using a really small brush right here and just adding a tiny little bit of splatters. Now I could have gone with black, but I wanted a softer look. You see right here, it's nice and soft, but there's a lot of detail to all of those pieces. So I've gone ahead here and I've matted my card front that's going to go right here on the base and I did the same thing I added a tiny little bit of splatters which is all done in charcoal and I did stamp my sentiment in charcoal as well so there's a continuity between that color and there's a continuity with the rest of the card so again use a small brush to get small splatters and it will work nicely every single time. So let's put these pieces on top of the card. And again, at any time here, you could stop and this card looks perfectly fine, but I like to elevate it just a tiny little bit. And I find that by adding this layered flower right on top, it just gives it another dimension. So I'm going to add here, just glue on the, the branch part, the stem, just so that I can move that ever so slightly on my card front. So I'm going to pop this down right here. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put that flower. And then this is when I realized, oh, wait a minute, like these leaves here are hanging off the edge. So I'm going to move that up ever so slightly. And because I'm going to add my flower right in the center, it's going to cover up like I did have a little bit of a glue mess underneath, but this flower is going to hide all sins. So let's pop that guy right here on the front. I'm using again 3D foam tape and I'm going to put that little flower right here at the front of my card and I'm going to add another one. So I was trying to do, you know, like the rules of threes and add three flowers and strategically place them on the card so that they look great, but they don't hide too much of my stencil. And I think that I've achieved that by doubling them up right here in the lower left corner. So let me snip this off just so that it, it meets up with the frame. And I'm going to add one right here at the top. So I'm going to cut this down because I don't need the full piece. And uh, I'm just going to kind of fold them. I'm just barely folding them up and I can pop that right here on the top, making sure that it doesn't float off the card because <laughs> you won't be able to put it in your envelope if you do that. Again, ask me how I know that. <laughs> it was one of those days. Anyways, so there we go. I'm going to pop this down and add that little flower right here at the top with a thin foam dot. I really like the foam dots for these flowers, like they're perfect. They're circular, they're not too big, and they're easy to handle. So there you have it. You have your layered card with the layered flowers. You've got that beautiful stencil at the background, and here I'm just going to glue down my front panel to my card base. And it was cut like an, an eighth of an inch shorter or smaller than the card front. I'm liking the way that this is looking. You've got a nice thin border. You've got those beautiful flowers that have been stencil on the back side and then you've got these great layered flowers right here on the top. 
So for the inside of the card, I've done this in a lot of my cards. I'm actually doing this on most of my cards now. I'm on a kick, I guess. So I use my rectangle um, die and I layer it up with the color that's on the front and I just find that it looks really really nice on the inside. So I'm going to add a few gems. I'm going to put one right up here and then I'm going to concentrate them right by the sentiment so that it draws your eye to the sentiment and that's all. I'm only going to add three and I think that it looks really really good. Okay so let's move on to project number two which is the same concept but using a slimline card. Now I really like the way that my older Cricut mat is holding everything down. So here you can tell on the right hand side that that was going to move on me a tiny little bit so I decided to use washi tape but for the most part this is so much easier for me I find because it's not moving and I can rotate uh, my card front once I'm done working on the bottom part right here. So I'm going to position my flower and uh, I'm just going to press it down. I'm going to add a little bit of washi tape and then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the lighter shades first followed by the dark and then I go back with the lighter shades as well. So this is the beauty flipping that piece around. Um, was game changing for me, I have to say that. And uh, you saw that I actually pressed down my stencil with just the handle of my blending brush here, and that works well um, too. So I'm just kind of pushing down on my little stencil, and everything just stays in place. So I'm loving this hack. So we're going to flip this back and forth, we're going to take a peek at it and I think that I really like the way that this is going to look. Now when I started with this card originally I thought it was going to be a portrait kind of orientation and then it ended up being a landscape which is great too. So I did go ahead and I stamped my sentiment. Again I'm using the Many Wishes card making kit. There's tons of sentiment on that stamp and they're all really, really good. So here I've got my front. It's nice and complete and I'm going to add those layered flowers to the front here. And again, you could stop right here. That, that card looks really good. But these little flowers right here at the top, I just think that it adds just a little bit more. So we're going to kind of try and position all of those pieces. Again, I'm trying to strategically place them on the card to add to the card and not to hide too much uh, of what's going on in the background. That little flower right here, I could have just left it, but I thought, you know what, I've got a couple of leaves right here, so I'm just going to tuck them in just like so. And I think that that looks pretty good. So I've gone ahead and I've glued everything down. I didn't think you needed to see that, but uh, I do kind of pinch on my leaves a tiny little bit and then I just position them right on the card. So here you've got a nice close-up of those layered flowers, the stenciling, all of the splattering. And this one right here, I'm not sure why I stopped during the process, but I did and I thought, wait a minute, why should I throw that out? I'm going to add it right here on the inside of the card. And now that I'm looking at it, that would make a pretty card too. But I thought, okay, well let's use it. So sometimes you just have to keep your pieces until you're all done. And I think that that makes for a really nice um, inside piece. I'm going to add a few of those um, silver glitter gems and again I'm doing the same thing I'm adding a big one at the top and then I'm adding a big one and a smaller one right here close to the sentiment which draws your eye to the sentiment on the card. So that looks pretty good and I, I'm really glad I kept that inside piece. Alright so we are done with the A2 size card, the slimline card, and I thought, you know what, this is a special for National Scrapbooking Month or day. 
So I thought, okay, let's cut some pieces here and let's put a single page layout together using these beautiful flowers. So I have this one photo of me and my hubby and we were out on a walk and I thought, okay, I can make this work. I've got this beautiful mix in sheet from the In Full Bloom and uh, when I'm adding my photo right here, it's a little bit busy. Like it, my photo gets lost on the background a tiny little bit. So we're gonna cut that out, but I just wanna make sure I'm cutting it at the right size. So it's like four and a half. Yeah, I think I'm gonna cut that down to four and a half. And I'm gonna bring that back and I'm gonna use those words for my journaling. So let's bring all of these pieces here so I can kind of do a dry assembly and add my flowers. I want to make sure that it doesn't cover my photo too much. And you'll notice that the center flower, I added a tiny little bit more color to it just to give it more dimension. So I'm just lining up my flowers and I've got this white base and see these words? They're great. So I'm going to have to look through that and use those for my journaling, as I said before. I did cut the I love you um, thin cut, it's, it's a thin cut, and I layered it up and I've got more of these layered flowers. So I'm going to add um, five, so you've got three of the larger flowers and then five of the smaller ones. So you know, the odd numbers here are coming into play. But before I glue everything down, I am going to do some distressing. So I did some splatters. Let's get my camera to focus here for a second. There you go. <laughs> so I did some splatters on the flowers with the tiny little brush. And then this fan brush here is really great because it gives you nice big splatters, but sometimes they're too big. So see here, it was really big, my first splatter if you want, but I knew I was gonna cover that. So I was pretty brave here and just kind of went for it. So I did add that all on the white side and then I'm just going to rub my ink pad around the edges just to kind of finish that whole base. So we're gonna go back to the flowers here. And although I really like that fan brush, when it comes to adding a little bit of splatters to images such as these flowers, I still prefer to go back to my tiny little brush. So that's just a preference, but it works out well for me. I've got a little bit more control that way. So right here, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit of ink blending. I'm gonna bring in some of that peach, just a very light blush underneath the love you and I thought that was appropriate and uh, I'm just gonna add it right here now you might not see it all that well in the video but in in real life it stands out really really nicely so we're gonna add our little kind of branches here and there and I'm just gonna tuck them in and I'm just going to kind of complete that cluster of flowers and this little guy is like the piece of resistance. He is so good. I love this butterfly. He is from the In Full Bloom collection. And when you do him up in these really nice orange colors, he takes on a whole new look. So he was so great that I didn't need to add more because I would have had to probably add three butterflies, but I thought just that one was perfect. I added that little film strip again from the In Full Bloom collection and uh, we're just going to finish off our page right here. So I went through and I picked a few kind of words off of the back side that actually matched my layout right here. And I'm just going to add them here and there on this layout and that's just going to add um, kind of like journaling without me actually journaling about it like really we were just going out for a walk but um, there's a few keywords that I could choose and add them to my layout and I'm really happy that I took the time to read all of them and find that they're actually really good so check out the back side of that sheet because there's lots of words there that could definitely be used 
for a card or here, as you can see on a layout. So I'm going to add a few little dots and I'm kind of grouping them in pairs. So a big one and a little one. Let's take a closer look at this layout. So I use the Many Wishes card making kit to complete this page and I brought in a few elements from Info Bloom. I love that paper. I really, really like the extra dimension that I got from those layered flowers and that butterfly is so good. I really, really like him. So I hope that you've enjoyed all of these projects and I hope that you've picked up a few tips along the way. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And if you're not a subscriber, I would love for you to join. I've linked a few videos here that I think you might just like. I will catch you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.